You're such an asshole! Oh, do we have a doozy, boys and girls. I am going to do what I do best, and that is talk out of my ass about shit I know nothing about. Actually, that's not true. I know pretty much everything of what I'm talking about. But this one, I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. Dear asshole, I want to thank you for all that you have done. I started tuning into your videos a year ago and wish I had them when I was younger. Said everybody ever, which is only indication that high school kids should be listening to me. I should be more pop popular than Biggity Boo and Boobity Boop Boppity Bops or whoever's popular on YouTube now. I recently became a father to a pretty young girl. Obviously, I was excited to have my first child, and even though I knew having children would be a large responsibility, it wasn't until she was born did it dawn on me just what a responsibility it is. They're completely helpless at first, and I worry about everything that could possibly go wrong in this world with her. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know that, but I saw like my um, nieces and nephews being born, and then there's like, ah, and then like by the third one, like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> It'll figure it out. Because I didn't, I wouldn't even hold the kick. I was like, ah, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to break it. I don't want to drop it. And then you're like, ah, it's all right. I can. And then they're, they're kind of wrestling, but not infants. But once they hit three, you can start hanging them upside down and all that. I know you don't like kids and you don't have any, but one of my main fears is to make sure my daughter does not grow up to become some SJW liberal who is easily corrupted by feminism, is trained by the education system to hate her father. I want her to grow up to be happy, successful, and independent, but most of all, I want her to be a unicorn so she can find a good man and live a happy life. Despite not being a parent, do you have any suggestions or recommendations? If you're ever in a national area, let me know. Drinks with me. Okay, guys, regard David. All right, well, thank you, David. All right, um, and I say, hey, you know, he's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, all right. So what I did is I enlisted the help of parents who have raised unicorns. We're going to just focus on girls. If someone wants to pay me for a boy, I, I, I could, it's, it's almost going to be the same, except I think for those of you in my audience, you're going to know where to switch it. Uh, but this is this is kind of universal. I, I guess I'd have some different upbringings or ideas for boys. Um, let me go through the information that I got from people who actually have raised quality daughters. And then I'll go through what my logic and thinking says. All right, first one was consistency. The first guy I talked to, he has this little daughter and he does amazing with her. Um, she's happy, he disciplines her, she is the most well-behaved four-year-old you're ever going to run into. And she's going to grow, I can't guarantee it, but I, I'm going to bet money she's going to grow up. And, and I've seen him. He's on it, man. He is on her. If she steps out of line, why did you do that? And it's not necessarily spanking or, or harsh discipline, but he talks to her like an adult and gets her to understand why her behavior was not acceptable. Um, and what he says is it was consistency, not only with the punishment, like between him and his and his wife, um, they provide a united front, not mom and dad or on oh, and, and I'll get to this later. You don't have your wife fucking judge you or second guess you in front of the child. I'm, oh my God, then you punish your wife. Did you just say, yes, I did. Uh, and not in the good kind of way either, like a screaming, uh, but... You guys have got to be on the same page. <clears throat> Most supporting women, it sounds like you got a decent wife. They're going to understand, yes, we can't disagree in front of the child. But it's consistency in the discipline and the rules. But then also, what you say, you also do. And he was talking about how, like, you know, um, some of the parents he hangs out with, they'll... They'll, they'll yell at their kid for something, but then they'll do like, you know, kid spills the milk and they'll yell at the kid for spilling and then they'll spill their beer. And oh, geez, oh, that's all right, Bob, we'll get it. The kids, they, they pay attention to that. So you must be consistent and in your words too, like, no, I'm going to spend time with you. And then you go and spend time with your daughter or son. So not only is your treatment of her consistent, your behavior is consistent. So that's what one guy says. Uh, another guy, you want to keep her away. Oh, this is the, this is the wife. The mom says, you want to keep her away from the girl drama at school. And it starts very early, third, fourth grade, even starting in elementary school. You keep her away from the girl drama, and you do that by instilling independent thought in them. You, you say, no, you can have every... Because they don't know they're in a cacophony or a, an echo chamber, and they're like, what do I... And tribalism kicks in. you got to go with the tribe, otherwise you're not going to survive two million years ago. Uh, not so much the case today, plus the absolute garbage that the Disney Channel and media and motherly, quarterly, mega, whatever are raising these girls up 
So they go piss away more money and buy this doll, they buy that clothes, they get a purse or whatever. You got to keep the girls out of the girl drama. And so uh, you have them be independent minded. How do you have them be independent minded? That is where the father comes in. The father will explain, and if you did it right, from zero to five, before they go to kindergarten, you say, dad is always right, you know? You go talk to your father, all right? We are always right, we know what's better. Forget and prepare the kids, say, just because they do it in school, you know, we're not even talking kids, we're talking about your teachers who want to brain, brainwash your six-year-old kid to think they're transgender. Uh, you, you explain to them uh, that what happens at school is not necessarily what's right. That's a popularity contest, uh, more or less. Uh, the father says, father-daughter time. Not mom-father-daughter time. The dad needs to spend time with the daughter by themselves, just as the mom needs to spend time with the daughter by themselves and together as a family. But it, there needs to be father-daughter time so she knows what men are like. Dad can impart wisdom and take her out on activities. Fishing, hiking, hunting, Movies, the father-daughter dance, uh, take her to Princess Gooby uh, Disney down there. You can meet her. You, you know, take her to see Santa. Although it's more of a family thing. Um, Dad, I know it's just crazy. I know you all thought we could just outsource the kid, like the life of Julia. Like it spat out a kid. Dad's not even around, and you ship out the kid to daycare. No, spend time with your daughter. You had sex, you invested all this time and money raising it, don't you want to kind of hang out with it, see what it's like? I... And the other father that I know that uh, has the four-year-old, that's all he does. He works and he comes back, oh no, he works from home, so he's always been, and they know what they do? They go hiking. He brings her with, he throws her in a backpack, it's kind of cute. And then they go camping and they like have a fire and they roast hot dogs. And he's always talking to her, and he's always making fun with her. And they're like, yo, Steve. Hey, Steve. And she just is so, and he's, they're working on motorcycles. They're working on the truck. She's pretty worthless as a mechanic. Does it matter? She, hey, you want to work on the motorcycle? Yeah, she's all excited about hanging out with dad. All right? And so you got to spend time with your daughters. Uh, and then, <clears throat> kind of related to inoculating them against the drama uh, this, uh, in school, you have to defend against the you-go-girlism, where you are special because vagina. And they're going to get that in school. That's going to start early. That's going to start kindergarten. Where it's like, you go, you maybe can do anything you want. Not that you should squash your dreams, but you need to teach the girl, look, they're going to tell you that you're special because you have a vagina. There are 3.5 billion women just like you. You're not special. You need to make yourself special. You need to do something unique. And, and, and so you have no right to pride, to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? An attitude or arrogance or a holier than thou opinion without accomplishing anything. Your vagina does not make you special. And so that you go girlism, which lulls women into a false sense of work ethic where it's like, I'm just special because vagina. I mean, it's really sad, but it's true. These women think they're just great because they're women. It's like, well, what did you fucking do? I did this and I did that. Those aren't accomplishments. All 3.5 billion of you did that. You, you what? You, you raised some kid, it, you know, but you outsourced it to daycare. You got a degree in English. That's not an accomplishment. Did you spend time with your kid? Did you get a, you know, like a STEM degree? That's okay. Now you go, girl. <clears throat> but the mere existence, being born and you happen to have that chromosome versus the other, and I forget which is what, uh, that's what you have to defend against. All right, now, that's all I got. I was waiting to hear back from some people, but I never did, and, and if I do, I'll do that. This is, now that, that's experts. Those are people that actually have daughters that were raised to be really cool, kick-ass daughters. Um, and I hope that one daughter doesn't watch this because she's a fan. She's like, oh my God, he ain't like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so here's where I have come in with my own opinion, my highly uninformed, no experience, zero experience theoretician's opinion. Uh, and I'm, I took a little bit more of a methodological top-down approach. <clears throat> the mo we're operating from the premise that the most important thing in life is people, right? You want your daughter to live a happy life. And so the key to happiness is good quality people, all right? And so the way to find it in, in a woman's life, if you're normal, the most important people will be your husband, your kids, 
and your family. And, and, and I'm sorry, your family, kids with family as well, but then your friends as well. And friends will kind of go the way of the wayside. But those are going to be the three main important things. Now, how you get them <clears throat> is kind of where the unicorn thing, the guy talks about the hot crazy matrix. The unicorn is just two things. She's hot and not crazy. You have beauty and brains. But to that, I'm going to add interestingness and a cautious selflessness. And the reason I say cautious selflessness or, or a very guarded selflessness is because you just don't want to be everything to everyone because then people take advantage of you. You want to be cautious with it. You want to award it only to those who deserve it. So beauty, which is going to serve certain capacities with among these three different categories. Brains, because you want to be uh, not necessarily educated, but you want to have, you know, the kids are going to go away, assuming you have kids. But if you don't have kids, what are you going to do? You know, you got to do something. And so why not, while you're on this planet, become a, an intelligent young woman, become an educated young woman, go into STEM, go become a doctor, become a tradesman, whatever it is. But you got to have brains as well, um, because then you could support yourself, you can help support the family, um, whether there's kids there or not. Interestingness, <clears throat> because... the Look, you could get a hot chick. You could get a hot, smart chick. But by God, if you can't keep the guy's attention or intellectually stimulate him, um, he's going to, he might go have, what would you call it, a, a, an intellectual affair. you got to be interesting. You, you just have to. You have to have interesting hobbies. Like and then the cautious selflessness is you cannot have a truly loving relationship unless you're capable of selflessness. You have to put that other person's desires and wants ahead of yours. Right? You have to love that person more than yourself. Uh, otherwise, you're all, then you will be competing. Then it's the modern day baby boomer and newer marriages where you're fighting for resources, you're fighting and vying for position. Um, and it's not fun. It's a pain in the ass. And I think all you people know that by now, for those of you who are married and divorced. Did, did you figure it out, ladies? Uh, but I also want it to be a cautious selflessness because I don't want women to try to be everyone to everything because then there are scumbag guys out there and women, other people in general that will take advantage of that selflessness. So you only award it to them. So with the quality husband, you want to find a quality husband? You, you got to be the quadruple threat. You need to be beautiful. You need to be selfless. You need to uh, be interesting as we, as we told you before. Uh, but then also I would say you got to train in her, not, not to do this for all men, only the men that deserve it. You're either going to, I don't want to call it obedience. I call it you either support or there's silence. Support or silence. Girlfriend starts, to, I, I, Support or silence. There is no nagging. You could support me. That's great. You could be silent. That is also fine. The fucking nanosecond you start getting in my face or start questioning my decisions, that that's nagging. I, I go from zero to fucking rage. You want to see me? Still trying to control like discipline and go, but man, I, I it's just like wow. Like, all right, do you want to take over? And you fucking take over. And by the way, I'm gonna loaf around and eat bonbons all day. So. Uh, it is not to say a woman shouldn't contribute to a conversation or point. Oh, hey, have you thought about this? But the you're not. It, it's it's basically you're not in charge. The man is in charge of the household, unless and this happens occasionally where it's just natural that the guy is more the supporting role and the woman is the dominant role. That happens, and I'm not against it. I know a couple. That's the. The woman wears the pants in the family. That's fine, but typically, though not always, and explain this to your daughters, <clears throat> the man is genetically programmed to be the captain of the ship, and she's supposed to be the first officer. If she's nitpicking, then fuck you. You wear the pants and go find a beta cuck to, to go marry, all right? But those are the four things. you got to be beautiful to attract quality men. You have to be selfless to keep the guy. You have to be interesting, and then you have to be support or silence, all right? Not... Constructive criticism is welcome, but if you want to do it your well, then go find a guy. But that's it. Quality kids. Selflessness is obviously the key trait here. Uh, and pretty much 99% of the women today said, fuck the kids, fuck selflessness. I want a kid because I want to have a kid because that's what I want and that's what my genetics are telling me. And oh, God, I got to raise it, I got to feed it. And, and they outsource it. Um, but if she wants to have a family, if your daughter grows up and says, I really do want to, okay, good. That's an important thing to assess early on. And then while you are in breeding range, you know, 18 to about 30, 
You might want to have your kids then and get it done and over with. And then when you're 30 and older, then you can go get your master's degree in public administration or whatever fucking worth of shit you want after that. But uh, in the meantime, if you really love your kids, you're not going to go and pursue a career. You're not going to go and get your master's degree. I mean, if you can, you know, once kids get a little bit older, you know, they're in school, you got time. I, I'm saying like, you know, from zero to five. You got to take them only from zero to kindergarten. So once the youngest is in kindergarten, okay, that opens up. But you're going to raise your fucking children that you had, not the state, not some strange old bag lady with cats who works over at the daycare center, not your fucking pre-K or early childhood development education, which is what the state of Minnesota is trying to do so they can just get those kids into a government facility before they're even a fucking zygote. You will raise your fucking kids. And if you do a good job as a father or mother and make their childhood fun, they're going to say, wow, I so want to spend time with my children because my dad spent time with me and my mom spent time with me and we went hiking and we went fishing and my dad spent time with me and we, we, and we wrestled and he hugged and he disciplined. They will have a fond memory of childhood. But if, if you're not there during childhood... Why the fuck, you know, you don't give them a good childhood. Why the fuck would they have children? Say, no, childhood sucked. My dad wasn't around. My mom wasn't around. I went to some weird old lady's daycare facility. I was shipped out to school. There was no after school. Everyone was too busy. I know you guys all got to have your fucking busy plans. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do soccer. We got to do this. We got to do the flippy bars. If there's no childhood and no pair, they're not going to want to have kids. Because they say, well, that sucks. Who the fuck wants that? <laughs> I'm just going to drink wine and eat sushi all day. Hey. Uh, so selflessness, ladies. Or gentlemen raising daughters. Uh, a spine to discipline. Uh, this, if you love your kids, you're going to raise them to be competent adults. All right? So you need to have a spine, and your wife needs to have a spine to discipline. But if she's going to grow up and become a mother, she needs to discipline her children. I have to deal with children now, and I, I, I don't go to family events anymore. I, I just don't attend these. I, I, I went this past week, and I'm like, no, I'm not. And I, I walked away, because no one disciplines the kids. Kids run all over the fucking place, and you can't have conversation. It's not fun. It's not. It's painful. It's not even neutral. Neutral just be sitting in a room by yourself like, yeah, this is quiet. I can listen to a podcast. This is kids completely misbehaving, screaming. And then you compare it to the four-year-old, where the father is obviously very present, and he's on it, and he's actually putting forth the effort into being a father. Um, that kid, I could hang out with that. That girl, she helped me with my motorcycle, helped. She's a gem. She's a charm. I, even though we're not exactly talking Stefan Molyneux-esque philosophy with her, I could still talk to her. One of my nieces is very wonderful and charming. We play ball all the time, and we can still have it, but the... Fuck... So the mom needs to discipline. The mother needs to mother as well. So if your daughter is going to grow up to be a mother and you want to train her, it's like you need to have a spine and stand up for yourself in general. But when it comes to raising children, when she raises her, her family, she needs to spank the kid. I know a lot of you just don't believe in spanking. What do you see the kids I see? Um, she needs to say, no, you're going to, and not bribe with cake. Not like, hi. See, there's the difference between having an adult serious conversation with your kid and you say, why is that wrong? You can raise your voice, but then, dear, we don't do that. I'm talking the fathers when they talk to don't do that, daddy. The mother comes in, don't do that, daddy. Kids fucking owning the place, running all around. <laughs> so the mom needs, she got to have a little bit of a fucking whip to her, all right? And otherwise, and then finally, she just has to be willing to raise the kids. She has to, the, your daughter, when she goes, she has to be willing to, and then friends, this will parlay into finding a husband and Evelyn, but let's just go with it because friends are very important, at least to me, and I think they're very, they're a blessing in life and, and they are other people. This is where interesting hobbies and philosophy and all that has to go. She has to have interesting hobbies. She has to study philosophy, not necessarily study, but learn it, which is the same as studying. But she just can't, honest to God, don't raise your run-of-the-mill Think of the average American female high school graduate. How milky toast and vapid can you be? I did like the children. I, I, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Could you imagine something more boring and bland? 
I mean, a white sheet of paper's got more to say about it than, than an average female high school graduate. You don't want her to be that. You want her to understand economics. You want her to understand philosophy. You want her to understand freedom. You want to kind of have her understand why Western civilization became the greatest thing ever. Not to bias it towards Western civilization, but like, what is the point and purpose of life? These type of philosophy. So she's not pissing away her time. Like, I don't know. I, just think I, did, yeah, did, yeah. I mean, most, most high school graduates, male and female, are worthless human beings. All right? That's 18 years, 13 years of which we're in school. Have a little bit of an influence in there. Have her listen to a little bit of Stephen Mullen. Make her an interesting person. And on top of that, have interesting hobbies. For fuck's sake, don't have her be another typical white piece of paper. I'm in tap, jazz, and ballet. That's fucking worthless. I'm in gymnastics. What, you flip on the bars? Ooh, good for you. All right, how about something up here? Develop the brain up here. And not the fucking leftist slop they're going to say, this is intellectual. I have vagina, give me money, which is all feminism ever. Have her be a little bit more deep, a little bit more philosophical. Teach her how to shoot guns, all that other stuff. You want an interesting person too. Not just smart, not just a good wife material, not just good mom material. You want her to be her own person. Because then it's like, holy shit, that's a cool gal. Oh yeah, ain't, oh yeah. And then that's going to get the smart guys who have real, you know, now of course all guys, there's going to be smart scummy guys, but the good, good intelligent guys that you're going to want to have as a, as a stepson, or not stepson, son-in-law, they're going to be like, damn, she's cool, man. She shoots guns. You know, oh, man, she knows how to drive stick. She can change oil. Not that these are hobbies, but you get the idea. Don't, don't have your daughter, after nearly two decades under your roof, all she can point to is like, I'm going to go to college. And I'm really smart. Please, raise, you can raise a really cool kick-ass chick by the age of 18. That's it. Uh, leftists, uh, or, I'm sorry, quality friends continue on. You do not want to raise her a leftist. Um, and you do not want to have leftist friends. Now, that's almost impossible when you're younger because everyone's a leftist. But at least teach her the difference because down the road, and this, this will become important, you just don't want leftists in your life. When you're young and dumb and stupid, sure, okay, everyone's a leftist because they're well-intended, all right? But in LA, you got to grow the fuck up. I have to live in the real world. And if you're 30 and you're still hanging out with leftists, something fucking wrong with you. You're hanging out with the degenerates of society. And I don't mean, I'd rather hang out with a criminal. At least criminals work for it a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I don't deal, I don't have any leftists in my life. I do not tolerate not only parasites, but intellectual inferiors and hypocrites on top of it. Some are very intelligent, uh, but they're hypocrites. They just aren't empirical. So I teach her not to be a leftist, not that you want to control her her, her political uh, thoughts and ideas, but for the quality of her friends. I mean, what do you want her to do? Wear a pussy hat and go protest over in, in Washington, D.C.? Or do you want her sitting over in like the chemical engineering lab like, oh yeah, dude, let's go hang on. Uh, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play uh, beanbag ball or whatever and having a much better, because the leftists aren't happy. In the long run, they're not. So that's just, you know, down the road, and then self-respect and standards. This is the governing aspect of the cautious selflessness. You need to teach her, just like guys have to realize, wait a minute, you know, this, this happened to every guy ever, except now the internet's kind of making it a little bit so it doesn't happen anymore. You get shot down by a girl. You're like, what did I do wrong? What's wrong with me? You want her to get to the point, just as you want a son to get to the point, wait a minute. I may be 20, but I'm a chemical engineering major. I work part-time. I got some interesting hobbies going on. Maybe I'm not old enough to be the world's most interesting man, but, and I'm in shape. By God, I'm a pretty damn good guy. And if that girl shoots me down, fuck her. There's something wrong with her, and I probably dodged a bullet. You want your daughter to have the same kind of standards. Not that when she asks out a guy, because women don't do that, because, oh, yeah, pussy, okay. Mm -hmm. But you want her that when a boyfriend dumps her, or when even a guy's asking her out, she could say, wait a minute, wait a minute. She could do an honest assessment. I'm majoring in nursing, going to become a, an LPN. Oh no, a nurse practitioner. I'm going to become a nurse practitioner or a pharmacist or an accountant. I'm going to become something really. And here's this guy who, okay, he's cute. He's really cute. Uh, but his name's Chadwick McChaddison the fourth, And uh, he's majoring in business and he's kind of a dude bro and... Yeah, we'll go out a little bit, maybe have a little bit of fun. But if he goes out with Susie McHugh and I see her done, I'm like, I'm not going to get worried about it. 
You got to have your daughter have self-respect and know her own worth. And then also the standards so that when she says, hey, here's a selfless guy who appreciates the selflessness, the cautious selflessness principle, just like me. He will put me first in, in his life. I'll put him first in my life. And that will work. Uh, otherwise, she if, if she doesn't see that in another man, she knows enough to say, no, that's not for me. I'm going to pass. Now, she's going to become picky. There's a difference. See, all the women out there now, and, you know, they, well, he must make six figures. He must be six foot three. He has to have a, he has to run six miles. And, and, and you know, like, and, oh, my God, he must have this. He must like cats. And I, you must train your daughter to say, okay, <clears throat> is this a quality man? Is this a stable, reliable man? And is this person going to be worth my time? Not check marks. I mean, yeah, there should be some check marks, like not in jail, you know, no other woman's kids, doesn't do drugs. We got that. All right? But this is more, again, philosophical, long-term thinking. Oh, is this a good quality husband to have children with? So there's that. Now, that's the overall on those four traits, beauty, brains, interestingness, and then a cautious selflessness, um, and how it applies to the three most important categories of people as far as my logic takes me. How you actually raised her, this is where I, you know, and I came up with what, about nine rules, 11, sorry, 11 rules. <clears throat> some which is gonna sound like repeating, but a lot of these are like, you know, here's some rules that if, if you don't understand the overall philosophy of this, you follow these rules, I think your daughter, or your son, if you had one, uh, tailoring it, of course, to a son will come out pretty well, all right? First, you have to inoculate her against feminism and socialism. That shit is going to be driven down her throat um, in, in school. And you got to, so if you can homeschool, cool. Uh, if you can send her to a private school, cool, but that doesn't guarantee anything uh, either. <clears throat> what you need to do, like all parents, is sit down and talk with your daughter. Spend time with her. Explain what's going to, and even before she goes to school, say, hey, this is what's going to happen. They're going to brainwash you and trying to tell you that you're bad because you're white, you're bad because, or, or he's bad because he's male. Men have pre all this other bullshit. The kids should you should be reading, writing, and arithmetic. And if it goes outside of those three things, then it's then it's a lie, or it's propaganda. All right. And then anytime someone comes back, well, let's talk about it. How was your day at school? Stuff like that. Say, let me see what your teachers are giving. And I even have a rule. You give me everything the teachers give you, and you just look through it. And make sure there's no leftist rank propaganda. Because I don't think you're going to see any rightist rank propaganda going on there. <clears throat> It'll be tuned up a lot, though, as she hits puberty and gets older and goes into college. Where the feminist bullshit comes in. But by that time, hopefully you will have proven to her that men aren't evil. Because you're a good dad. Uh, and that feminism just, you know, I mean, God almighty, just show them. Just show them feminists. The, the women will be like, ooh. Well, at least young girls. Um, so that's the, the first thing I, I would do there, all right? Before you even have a kid, this is too late for you, but uh, for those watching, make sure you marry the right person. This is very important. So you don't get divorced and you raise them under a nuclear fucking family. That's a really important thing. And even if you hate each other, you and the wifey poo, or you and the husby poo, tough shit for you too. You two are going to stick together. You're going to put on the smiley face because you're not as important as your daughter or your son. You brought a kid in the world and you're going to act like you guys like each other. Now, there was one couple I know that did that and I still salute them to this day. They actually ended up going and dating other people while they were sent, but they, they put on the facade, waited until their youngest graduated from high school, and then they announced they were getting divorced. And I was like, boy, dude, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty honorable what they did there. All right, but let's avoid that altogether and let's just try and find somebody we like and is a good quality person. Of course, now the noon siren goes off. Uh, so it related, when you are with husband and wife and you're in your family, the man is the man and the woman is the woman. There's none of this co-lead bullshit. And again, I've made my point very clear. I don't care if the woman leads and the guy is first officer or if the guy is the captain and the woman is first officer. One person leads and the other person supports. Okay? Again, it's not that Captain Kirk never listened to Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock would come out with some outstanding observations. He was a key team. To, he was almost, probably, he is. He is just as important as Captain Kirk. 
one motherfucker got to lead. The other one's got to support and follow. And so you get, for the men, you got to find, again, a woman that was raised correctly where her father is still around, still participating in her life, and she follows. She supports. She's not... Um, and then ladies, you know, and you're going to have to, for the ladies who are watching, like, you got to figure out, are you the type of person to wear the pants in it? Nothing wrong with that. All right. But then don't go, look, if you're nothing wrong with power women, you're the lawyer, junior executive, junior partner at the age of 35, da, 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 you're probably going to want to find a supporting husband, be the house husband. Nothing wrong with that. But then he better support you, you know? There should be no, I mean, yeah. although I think some women by that time, if you're a true power woman, you found such a, such a beta uh, 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 male, they don't even bother. They're probably just happy. Hey, I raised a kid. What? Yes, dear. They're like, you know, they're all happy. You're kind of like Barney Rubble. See, Wilma and Fred, they were fighting all the time. I, 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 there's no way I could tolerate a Wilma. Uh, but Betty and Barney, Barney was just like, oh, okay. Because he was getting laid. Betty was getting them laid. He's like, oh, okay, Betty. But Betty was the alpha in that one. She wore the pants in that family. It worked. It worked fine. But by God, one person. So, it, by more traditional roots. In your house, of which I'm going to assume it is. You're the man. And, and not just because of leadership dynamics. But you got to show, this is typically what a man is like. And this is typically what a woman is like. Right? Genetically, biologically speaking. Leftists are going to try and fight biology no matter what. You can't say that. That's sex. Okay. Sweetheart, I know your teacher said that. Now, in the real world, in genetics and biology, the woman is typically the submissive supporting type, and the man is more the type to go out and get his ass kicked, but he's because of that, he gets to lead. He gets to make the decisions, and everyone supports him. So that uh, male-female dynamic, in front, and then also just show them that you love each other. You know, pinch your wife's ass every once in a while, spank her, give her a kiss, tickle her, something like that. It's not, you know... Juno Ward Cleaver is too sterile. I think if you ever watched Last Man Standing, and even that, I don't think. I mean, you know, spank your wife in the ass. Hey, all right, pitch her, you know, give her a kiss while the kid, and they're like, ew, gross, and then just kiss her some more. Oh, you thought that was gross? Mm, stuff like that. So show me can be happy too, because I don't think they've ever portrayed marriage as happy. Very important thing now teach her the power of female beauty. Explain to her that she has gotten all of her chips up front and she has this amazing amount of power over the most productive asset in the world and that is men. Explain to her that men have built civilizations so they can have access to her sex and pussy. All right? Maybe in politer terms than that, but explain that to her. So she knows what power she has and she does not squander it. Say, and the time's gonna come when this will go away. And you better use your female beauty now and the wisdom and guile I've taught you before on how to choose a correct man, to have standards, to be an interesting woman. <clears throat> but if you want to get married, it's, now's the time to do it. It's time to have kids. But you have this amazing power. And not only so that she doesn't squander it, but she can also capitalize off of it. Like, look, I, I'm not exactly a fan of it, but I can totally understand if a young, good-looking gal wants to go and strip uh, and make a shit ton of money and pay her way through an electrical engineering degree. I could totally understand that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I could even see, how well, you'd have to put on wigs and all, but you, you want to be a cam girl, go ahead, but you got to make yourself look different. Uh, you, you, you use, I know it sounds opportunistic, it goes against, but look, if men are dumb enough to part with their money, hell Yeah. Teacher, look, if you're going to find some sugar dad that's going to pay your way through college and all you got to do is go on a date or two with them, fuck yeah, do that. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. But then also on a more charitable side, you got to say, look, this guy's going to be nervous as fuck when he asks you out, assuming your daughter stays in good shape. <clears throat> go easy on him. These guys have got to approach you. They got to fucking impress you in a matter of 30 seconds or less. Be easy on him. And then I think she'll probably start to appreciate what men have to go through uh, to, to get or woo or impress a woman. But teach her that female beauty and just what power it, it has, and what kind of control it can have over men, and what it could get her in life, but that it does inevitably go away. Immediately following this one, number five, tell her the wall is coming. 
teacher about the wall. The wall is coming. It will end. And then all you have to do is look at modern day 60 something feminists to say, here's what they look like now. Or point out the librarian who hated cat in the hat. Or point out, hey, don't worry, there's plenty of, plenty of examples where these women will show themselves. Say, hey, do you want to become like this lady? Or do you want to become like your mother and me? Point nuclear married happy women that have like kids that raised them successfully. You know, now they got grandchildren. Do you want to be like happy grandma or do you want to be bitter old McCunt face from 1968? Just show them. But explain to her that this power, this amazing power that I was telling you about that you got very young, uh, it goes away between 35 and 45. I know all you virgin MGTOWs down there, oh, oh, after 25, she's fucking worthless. She's just a shriveled up vagina. I, I, tell her the truth, you know, depending on how well she keeps herself in shape, between 35 and 45, that's when the wall hits. And not to say that you really go splat, but you're not going to have anywhere near the amount of male attention. You get some 70-year-olds hitting on you. But explain to her that the wall ends. And this is the nature of things. This is how it works. Okay? So you're, you're explaining to her how life is going to play out. You explain the rules. and you, Dude, you do those two things right there. The power of female beauty on the wall. You're doing more for your daughter than, than any college program ever did. And most parents ever do in their lifetime. Six, personal financial management. Teach her frugality. Teach her to spend less than she makes. Have her read Bachelor Pad Economics. Have her read Poor Richard's Retirement. Um, that's a huge one. Uh, it's, I think, going forward. Although I, I'm wondering if there isn't going to be a revolution in online education. But any smart guy, not to mention for her own financial good, but any quality man is going to look, and if she's got a bunch of student loan debt and credit card debt and car debt and this debt and that debt, no. The smart, good, financially responsible men that you are going to want as a son-in-law are not going to date a woman that has $120,000 in debt. So <clears throat> if you could teach her the benefits of frugality, minimalism, Spartan living, just don't spend more than you make. And yeah, maybe she has to go into debt a little bit for college, but if it's for the right degree, cool. But that is a huge thing. A woman that has her financial shit together, oh! I mean, I mean we just, we're not even up to, to the end of the list. I mean, we're only halfway through it about, you get this much down, the girl's going to be a unicorn already. But, you know, I'm just trying to give you, so there, there's that. Next thing, uh, a liken to not going into debt, make sure she has a real profession. If she's going to go to school, make sure it's in the STEM, the trades, accounting, uh, uh, computer programming, just no worthless degrees. No worthless, and nursing is a great program. Nursing is a great field to get into. Uh, military, you just don't, and, and here's, it's going to help her out. Uh, not only with her finances, but her career, she's not going to be moving back at home. She's not going to need a bailout. Um, you're not going to have to worry. Let's say she unfortunately picks the wrong guy. Well, I'd be more worried. I mean, heck, go read that Guardian article about all these women get divorced and they're adjunct professors in their 50s and their 60s and they all got degrees in English or they're teaching critical thinking. Uh, their, their lives are over. You know, if your daughter chooses the wrong guy and they get divorced, I'd feel a lot safer. I'd feel a lot I'd sleep better at night knowing she's an electrical engineer than she's a fucking poetry professor. Literally sucking dick like the one gal in that article was to make it sweet. <laughs> what was that? Uh, eight. Exp she has to know why humans are the most important thing in life. Um, again, read Poor Richard's Retirement. Even though it's about retirement, I explain why humans are the most important things in life. Because once you figure out that humans are the most important thing, you eliminate the need for materialism. And for young ladies, that's huge. If you can eliminate the need for material things among women, that is huge. Not only because it will benefit their, their finances, um, but that will also lend towards that cautious selflessness. They will seek out good quality humans. They will seek out human interaction and they will cherish and value humans, be it their friends, their family, their husbands, or their children. Because right now, I mean, again, we can point to the millions of women, the Marissa Myers of the world, they don't understand that things are not as important as humans. Marissa Meyer loves money more than her daughter, her son, whoever she is. She loves her career, she loves things more than her child. And, and millions of uh, went by their actions. Don't tell me your childhood is the most amazing. No, it isn't. If it was the most amazing thing, you say, fuck work. I want to spend time with this amazing thing. 
Like if I had the most amazing thing ever, I would not be doing these videos. This is probably one of the more amazing things ever. But if I had a child, I, you know, you have to work. I understand that. Uh, but I'd be like, dude, I want to get back and hang out with that amazing thing. The most amazing thing ever. Uh, <clears throat> no, most people don't. Do it. But if you can get your daughter or son, universal, to understand that humans are the most important things in the world, She's not going to want stuff. She's going to want to spend time with, with dad and mom and family and friends. Um, and her life is... And then your demand, the amount of money you need, when you realize, when you replace things with humans, your expenses drop by like 80%. It's amazing how cheap life gets, you know. And then it's amazing how you can like bargain for more money. Like, man, it's not worth it. We'll throw you even more money. Yeah, all right, I'll take the $380,000 a year. Uh, nine... Explain the true nature of boys. Uh, they all want to fuck her, assuming she maintains her beauty. Uh, and only a few will want to keep her. Um, and, of course, she's going to want to keep the guy as well. But every guy is going to want to fuck her. Uh, but only a few are going to want to keep her. And that gets back to being an interesting woman, a selfless woman, a high-quality woman. I don't want to say educate. education doesn't hurt. I mean, certainly an education can make a woman interesting. Uh, obviously, it's better than nothing. But education isn't the right thing. Uh, so she doesn't want to just present pussy. She wants to present a quality woman where a guy's going to fall in love and say, holy shit, I want that. That's what uh, you want. Because, uh, dude, there, there's always, I mean, yeah, you guys all, you you know. There's a gal, yeah, I'd like to hate fuck her. I, I want nothing to do with her. Matter of fact, I have very little respect for her, but I could fuck her. I could fuck that. You know, you're not, you're not going to marry her. There's a gal I dated for like a year and a quarter and just because she was hot. And she was psycho, but I was like, there's no way I'm marrying her. There was no way I was going to commit to that. I was just banging her. It was great. You know, minus the craziness. <laughs> so we, we kind of all know that. But if she wants to find a really quality guy that wants to get serious, and she wants a family, then she has to bring a lot more than just a cute set of tits to the table. So explain her. That's how boys think. You know, that's, that's just the way. Dude, have her read Return of Kings. Have her read Bachelor Pad Economics. You gotta know. You should know. It's, it's like we we always get female stuff thrown in our face. You log out of Yahoo. It's like, oh my God, what is this People Magazine? Jesus Christ, this is women. We we got it. But very few, very rarely do women go into the locker room. Very rarely do women read Return of Kings without looking. At, you know, it's like okay, just accept this is how men are. You know, so she understands it. Um, get her working early related to personal financial management. You want to have her have a good work ethic early on. So starting with babysitting, even little things like entrepreneurship. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'd say fast food, but I, I don't know. You know, nothing wrong with working fast food. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I would, if she's smart enough, you want to train her well, I'd start even doing entrepreneurship. Have her mow yards. Have her shovel driveways. If, um, what is it? Nashville even gets snow? Whatever, um, have her, have her uh, do something, some kind of work ethic, so she gets her own money, and she understands that you can't just collect. Well, you can actually, according to Obama and the life of Julia, you just can, you know, go ahead and live off the government taxpayer. Uh, but get her a, a work ethic early on, so she has that hustle and that drive. Uh, when it comes to college, you might have to work an extra job, and then when her career starts. Um, and then finally, this goes back to. Uh, uh, one of the four things that has interestingness. You have to teach her economics, philosophy, history, and then other interesting hobbies. You have to make her, an, not, not necessarily like my fair lady, but you got to give her a brain. You got to teach her to think. You got to teach her to have independent thought. You got to teach her history. You got to teach, and I don't mean like let's study the battle, you know, Appomattox Courthouse. She has to understand human history. Have her listen to, um, in our time, have her listen to the History Extra podcast. Even though they're leftist bints, have her listen to Stuff You Missed in History podcast. Then also the hobbies. You want her to turn her into like the world's most interesting woman, basically. You know, she could shoot guns, take her ballroom dancing, not tap jazz and ballet and that faggoty shit. Um, you want to you wanna teach her... Uh, but whatever she wants to do, too, don't think you got to force her and have her grow up to be a tomboy. If she wants to, you know, okay, she wants to go tap jazz, but like, okay, fine, go ahead and do that. But um, camping, um, what else? I don't know what girls do. What do girls do? 
It's just so boring what they do. She likes to play video games. Get her into computer programming. You have her join now. I was going to say have her join the Girl Scouts, but that's all commie. I wonder if that's even cool anymore. Teach her mechanics. Some, anything. Anything interesting. And, you know, don't tell her what to do. Introduce, hey, would you like to try and do this? Would you like to try and do that? Flying kites. Air, like, one of the coolest things ever. My dad had a buddy who was, like, into model airplanes, and they'd fly, like, actual flying planes. Um, drones. Uh, something. Anything. You know, let her kind of figure it out, too, but introduce some cool stuff into her life. So, again, when she's 18, she's not just, my name's Tina. I'm majoring in international communications because I just care about the children. I got it. And, and like, I'm organic. Like, you don't want her saying, like, I'm, I'm a vegan or I'm a, oh, what is it? I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I'm a pacifist. That was the two one. Like, the true vapid blank sheets of paper in my high school were people that said that they were vegetarian because vegan wasn't a thing then and that they were pacifists. Because it's like, wow, you got nothing else in life, do you? Like, you just have jack fuck all going on, do you? <laughs> I'm, I'm like against war. No shit, really? Huh. No kidding. Well, I'm against, oh, are you against genocide too? Let me guess, you're against child rape as well. Wow, let's form a club, man. That's a way to take a position. So you don't want to become that. You want to be like, yeah, I'm into archery and, and I'm into... Um, I'm into painting, nothing wrong with art. Uh, you know, Mac Baldwin, I have her get into playing guitar. You, you just don't want her after two decades of life to just come out like the blank sheet of paper that most high school kids come out as. And then, and you know, again, I'm no parent, I'm no child psychologist, thank God. You do this, and she, even half this shit sticks with her. She's going to be in the top 1% of women, all right? She, you're not going to have to worry about her. She's going to support herself. She's going to have enough street smarts because you taught her about boys. She's not going to be taken advantage of. Um, she's going to have a keen eye to keep a, the lookout for a quality husband if she does want to get married and have kids. She's going to actually spend time with the kids and raise the kids instead of outsource it to daycare, life of Julia, Democrats uh, all excited about. Um, she's going to have fiscal responsibility. You're not going to have to worry about her starving in the streets. Uh, and she's going to be a really, she's not going to waste her life. She's going to live a happy life. Way happier than the rank and file of sheets of paper coming out of college or coming out of high school and college, going down the same path and being no different than anybody else. And that's as far as my thinking takes me. Boys would be a little bit different. Like I said, someone else would have to pay me for that. But as far as my logic and experience and wisdom and talking to other people, that's that's what that's how you would raise a unicorn. So. All right. You guys got questions, go to assholeconsulting.com. Be prepared to pay. It's not a free service. What else? Read my books. You can find them on Amazon.com. Most notably of this, germane to this topic, would be Bachelor Pad Economics and um, Poor Richard's Retirement. And I got a podcast out there called The Clary Podcast, which I'm going to have to do after I do asshole consulting videos. And that's it. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.